Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, you've been um, scrupulous about saying you would not comment on the Justice Department investigation of Hillary Clinton's email. Um, that investigation is now closed, and I hope that I could ask you about some of the comments that uh, FBI Director Comey made uh, a few days ago. Uh, as you know... You, you may, Mark, but I want you to make sure you're not wasting your question. I'm going to continue to be scrupulous about not commenting on it, just because I think Director Comey could not have been more exhaustive. My understanding is not only did he make a full presentation, but while we were over here, or at least flying, he was uh, presenting to Congress for hours on end. Um, but I, I just wanted to give you a chance, just okay. in case you didn't want to burn your question. I, I actually have a backup. There you um, go. <laughs> uh, I, I, maybe I could cut the chase and ask you about a broader question. Sure. Let's leave aside uh, Mrs. Clinton for the moment. He did talk at the end of his presentation about how he feared that there was a broader cultural issue in the State Department toward the handling of classified information that troubled him. And I wondered whether you rely on the State Department to conduct your foreign policy, uh, whether that concerns you as well. Yeah. And if I may, could I ask the other question? Because um, I think it might get an interesting response. You um, last May passed uh, a milestone uh, in that you uh, are now were president longer uh, when the country was at war than your predecessor, George W. Bush. And if you complete your presidency, uh, as you will, uh, with troops in Afghanistan, Syria, and Iraq, you will be the only two-term president in American history to have served with the country at war. And I wonder, uh, given the way that you ran for office and the aspirations you brought into office, how you feel about that Mm -hmm. uh, reality, and and then a second follow up on that: Should the American people simply um, uh, resign themselves to living in a state of perpetual war, even if that war is not the the all-out war that we think of in the 20th century? That was an interesting question. So, um, first of all, with respect to the State Department, I am concerned, um, and the challenge that we've got is primarily driven by the changing nature of how information flows. Um, look, the advent of email and texts and smartphones is just generating enormous amounts of data. Now, it is hugely convenient. It means that in real time I'm getting information that uh, some of my predecessors might not have gotten for weeks. But what it also is doing is creating this massive influx of information on a daily basis, putting enormous pressure on the department to sort through it classify it properly, uh, figure out what are the various points of entry because of the cyber attack risks uh, that these systems have, knowing that our adversaries are constantly trying to hack into these various systems. If you overclassify, then all the advantages of this new information suddenly go away because it's taken too long to process. Um, and so we've been trying to think about this in a smart way, and I think Secretary Kerry's got a range of initiatives uh, to try to get our arms around this. Um, it reflects a larger problem in government. You know, we just recently, for example, uh, I just recently signed a, a, a bill about FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act requests. Uh, that built on a, a number of reforms that we've put in place. We're processing more Freedom of Information Act requests and doing so faster than ever before. The problem is the volume of requests has skyrocketed. The amount of information that uh, answers the request has multiplied exponentially. So across government, you're